Depressed wife cheated, now suddenly wants divorce. Help me talk cope with her. I've been married to my wife for little over a year now, we've been together for almost 13 years. We have two children, aged two and six. And we have a problem. My wife always seemed to be a happy woman, the life of the party and a social beast. But she changed the past few years. Her first pregnancy was really tough on her and while giving birth to our oldest daughter she developed a trauma. When our little girl was 8 months old I started seeing something wrong with the woman I loved. When she played with her child, fed it. It just didn't look natural, didn't look real. Two months later she confessed that she had strong feelings that the child wasn't hers. That our girl was switched at birth. Another thing she confessed to was that she was having very violent images about our little girl. Someone entering the room and stabbing her, how she fell down the stairs. She was never the person doing it, but she had these images during the entire day. Eventually she was diagnosed with postnatal depression and got therapy. That she quickly ended three months later with a I can handle this attitude. I believed her, but slowly during the following year she changed. More and more she started stating things like, NBSP. If I had known it would be like this I would have never opted for a child. I love her with all my heart. But if I could I would reset time. Or, I would never do it because I'm not brave enough, but I have the urge to pick a tall building and just end it all. NBSP. She got into therapy again and slowly rebuilt her positive flow. Or so I thought. During these times I noticed that she stopped talking to me about her negative thoughts if I admitted how much she hurt me with them. So. I started to ignore my pain. And just listen to her. And tell her that we could work it out. Rationally I could explain her words and behavior, emotionally something dark grew in me. If me and our little girl were good enough for her. She wouldn't have said those things. Yeah. I know. It was a slow process. But it tore me up inside. So I started withdrawing, slowly. Over time. NBSP. We had a second girl and this time she did feel it. For about 3 or 4 months, then the shame hit her that she hadn't felt this with our oldest girl and in secret she started having dark thoughts again. It turned out that her thoughts of suicide went from unwanted to welcome. It was the last thing she thought before going to bed and the first thing on her mind when waking up. But for the outside world she remained the I can do anything and everyone loves me power girl that I fell in love with. But at home she became more and more tired and withdrew, just as I did because we had long periods, sometimes two or three months each year, where there was no intimacy. I wasn't allowed to touch her as timely and all that was allowed was cuddling. This triggered my own insecurities as, besides feeling not good enough, I was feeling unwanted and rejected. All this time though we kept going on, both stating we will get through this, these are the tough years with two small girls. NBSP. We got married at the end of 2016 and it turns out that her feelings during that period were darker than ever. Before our marriage she had met a man, a tattoo artist who was 15 years older who was working on her tattoo something to remember her dark period and her strength and who was married himself. They started an affair two weeks after our marriage and met in secret until I caught her this January. While digging through her lies she didn't want to tell me the whole truth I found out that she had been in contact with three other men. Sexted with two, but only had deep and meaningful conversations with the last one. The weeks after that she confessed to me that she had been very suicidal and that her meetings with that man felt like she could escape her reality, and live in a bubble for a few hours. Nobody but me knew of her dark thoughts, and she had hidden her darkest drives even from me. NBSP. We had a ton of arguments, but she told me she didn't want to lose me and that she loved me. That she made a mistake. That she was afraid that she was broken beyond repair. She had been seeing a therapist because she was suffering from a burnout, but she had only told her 10% of the truth. When I demanded she'd tell the therapist everything they told her that the case was too hard for her kind of therapy. At that time the verdict was still postnatal depression that devolved into PTSD. A few weeks ago she started with another clinic and they quickly stated that that verdict was wrong. PTSD didn't fit because she didn't have a trauma and because her thoughts were welcome and not intrusive. She felt at peace when browsing online for ways to kill herself, 
or deciding what music should be played at her funeral. Currently the verdict is dysmythic depression and she will be starting treatment soon. NBSP. But now for the hard part. We've spent 1.5 months trying to get past the fact that she had an affair. And I was slowly giving it a place that didn't cause pain all the time. The betrayal was painful, especially because she was always the one who crucified people who did this. And who started accusing me of having an affair the past year. I slowly got into a spot where I could manage, but two weeks ago I confronted her with the fact that she had only shown remorse two times. That it felt as if I was fighting harder for this than her. That it felt as if I was the one who had cheated and who was suffering, while she was being angry and defensive 24-7. She told me she felt it. And that she would try. But 30 minutes later she called me upstairs and told me it was over, that she loved me and the kids. But that her feelings were dead. Her trust was gone. NBSP. I know the stress of being caught, of having to hear that you have a dysmythic depression is causing her to block her emotions, to go on the offense instead of admitting to what she did. But it feels as if she is making a decision while being in her darkest place, as remote from her true feelings as possible. She has agreed to go to couples counseling, we have our first session tomorrow, but I'm really looking for advice on how to handle her depression. And she has already stated that she wants it to work out with all her heart but currently has no faith that it will help, she's dead inside. NBSP. I'm the kind of person who overanalyzes everything, I read up on altery. On the reasons why. On the best ways to get over it. And I tried to involve her in that. Much to her frustration. She seems to feel pushed instead of helped. And I think that may be my undoing. I try to help her, to avoid confronting her with the things she did. Or her dark feelings. But it almost feels as if I'm showing her too much leniency. I tell her I understand that I've made mistakes, place a lot of the blame on myself. And try to show her that I'm not the person that I became under the influence of her depression I radically changed my lifestyle. The things I do in the I don't care attitude that slowly grew on me. But this seems to provoke her aggression even more. When talking to other people she wants to let the whole world know what she did. To crucify herself she keeps stating that there are two sides to the story. And it's no excuse, but I felt so alone. Thereby forgetting that I was just as alone as her in the relationship. And when I talk to other people about what happened I'm mostly focusing on my mistakes. Not hers. It feels as if she blames me for what she did, for what she became. I'm not the kind of person who likes to be on the wrong end of the stick. But I have quickly found out these past weeks that if I confront her, or show too much anger, she withdraws. And pushes me away. Or gets angry. I know she's not without feeling. The time we spend apart she's crying. Taking long walks and is mentally unstable. She resents herself for what she did to me and to our children. For the pain she caused us. And hates what she has become. So, how on earth do I handle her depression and altery, show her that I love her. That I care. Without being a burden, or giving her the feeling that I'm pushing her. We've been living apart these past two weeks and she keeps telling me that she does love me, but that the spark is gone. But that she wants it to return. But in the meantime she can't be around me. How do I cope with her aggression and defensiveness, without losing myself? How do I show her that I'm not the man that I became? How do I make her understand that the burden of I'm not good enough, or my wife wouldn't have preferred death was slowly eroding me? Is it her depression that's causing her to turn off? Or is she really done with us? And if she is, where did the rejuvenation of our love live come from the past five weeks? Is it her fear that I will take revenge? That I will never be able to deal with what she did that's causing her to block her emotions? To protect herself? Or am I just a constant reminder of her mistake, of her infidelity? I'm not the victim type of person, most women see me as strong and attractive and I never had issues getting a girlfriend or a relationship. I know I will survive whatever is thrown my way and will be able to start a happy life if she continues on this path. It's just that I want to try everything in my power to get through this, without being too lenient or becoming weak in her eyes. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months, 
and it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes, she is depressed and has severe issues. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes. She is depressed and has severe issues and no that does not excuse her behavior she told the two therapists and me bluntly that she lied to me when she had s time with me the past few weeks she told me repeatedly that she would never be intimate against her will. But during that session she told us that she felt obliged to do it because of her mistake hearing that she lied about something as primal as this. Even though I asked her and never efforted her, angered me tremendously yes, she feels shame. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes. She is depressed and has severe issues and no that does not excuse her behavior she told the two therapists and me bluntly that she lied to me when she had s time with me the past few weeks she told me repeatedly that she would never be intimate against her will. But during that session she told us that she felt obliged to do it because of her mistake hearing that she lied about something as primal as this. Even though I asked her and never efforted her, angered me tremendously yes. She feels shame but not guilt it's all focused on her own pain and sorrow and the fact that everyone who knows about this judges her the other parents at school, her parents. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes. She is depressed and has severe issues and no that does not excuse her behavior she told the two therapists and me bluntly that she lied to me when she had s time with me the past few weeks she told me repeatedly that she would never be intimate against her will. But during that session she told us that she felt obliged to do it because of her mistake hearing that she lied about something as primal as this. Even though I asked her and never efforted her, angered me tremendously yes. She feels shame but not guilt it's all focused on her own pain and sorrow and the fact that everyone who knows about this judges her the other parents at school, her parents mine. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes. She is depressed and has severe issues and no that does not excuse her behavior she told the two therapists and me bluntly that she lied to me when she had s time with me the past few weeks she told me repeatedly that she would never be intimate against her will. But during that session she told us that she felt obliged to do it because of her mistake hearing that she lied about something as primal as this. Even though I asked her and never efforted her, angered me tremendously yes. She feels shame but not guilt it's all focused on her own pain and sorrow and the fact that everyone who knows about this judges her the other parents at school, her parents mine our friends the shame triggers her depression and in turn that triggers her anger she's just spouting her own rational for having an affair, a story that she has practiced for over a year in her own mind and usually in an angry state of mind and that's something that should and will stop during the session she was confronted several times by the therapists on why she was so angry on why her pain and regret focused on the literally small things that were wrong in our marriage, instead of the things she did wrong in the same marriage I'll wait until the next session before confronting her with her anger and total lack of respect for me and our kids because I reckon that things like that can best be discussed with a therapist in the room.
And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes. She is depressed and has severe issues and no that does not excuse her behavior she told the two therapists and me bluntly that she lied to me when she had s time with me the past few weeks she told me repeatedly that she would never be intimate against her will. But during that session she told us that she felt obliged to do it because of her mistake hearing that she lied about something as primal as this, even though I asked her and never effaced her, angered me tremendously yes. She feels shame but not guilt it's all focused on her own pain and sorrow and the fact that everyone who knows about this judges her the other parents at school, her parents mine our friends the shame triggers her depression and in turn that triggers her anger she's just spouting her own rational for having an affair, a story that she has practiced for over a year in her own mind and usually in an angry state of mind and that's something that should and will stop during the session she was confronted several times by the therapists on why she was so angry on why her pain and regret focused on the literally small things that were wrong in our marriage. Instead of the things she did wrong in the same marriage I'll wait until the next session before confronting her with her anger and total lack of respect for me and our kids because I reckon that things like that can best be discussed with a therapist in the room and not one on one if I confront her myself I will only cause her to dig herself in and lock the doors. If there's a neutral party present she won't have that chance yes. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes. She is depressed and has severe issues and no that does not excuse her behavior she told the two therapists and me bluntly that she lied to me when she had s time with me the past few weeks she told me repeatedly that she would never be intimate against her will. But during that session she told us that she felt obliged to do it because of her mistake hearing that she lied about something as primal as this, even though I asked her and never effaced her, angered me tremendously yes. She feels shame but not guilt it's all focused on her own pain and sorrow and the fact that everyone who knows about this judges her the other parents at school, her parents mine our friends the shame triggers her depression and in turn that triggers her anger she's just spouting her own rational for having an affair, a story that she has practiced for over a year in her own mind and usually in an angry state of mind and that's something that should and will stop during the session she was confronted several times by the therapists on why she was so angry on why her pain and regret focused on the literally small things that were wrong in our marriage. Instead of the things she did wrong in the same marriage I'll wait until the next session before confronting her with her anger and total lack of respect for me and our kids because I reckon that things like that can best be discussed with a therapist in the room and not one on one if I confront her myself I will only cause her to dig herself in and lock the doors. If there's a neutral party present she won't have that chance yes I still think there's a chance that we can save this. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes. She is depressed and has severe issues and no that does not excuse her behavior she told the two therapists and me bluntly that she lied to me when she had s time with me the past few weeks she told me repeatedly that she would never be intimate against her will. But during that session she told us that she felt obliged to do it because of her mistake hearing that she lied about something as primal as this, even though I asked her and never effaced her, angered me tremendously yes. She feels shame but not guilt it's all focused on her own pain and sorrow and the fact that everyone who knows about this judges her the other parents at school, her parents mine our friends the shame triggers her depression and in turn that triggers her anger she's just spouting her own rational for having an affair, a story that she has practiced for over a year in her own mind and usually in an angry state of mind and that's something that should and will stop during the session she was confronted several times by the therapists on why she was so angry on why her pain and regret focused on the literally small things that were wrong in our marriage. 
instead of the things she did wrong in the same marriage I'll wait until the next session before confronting her with her anger and total lack of respect for me and our kids because I reckon that things like that can best be discussed with a therapist in the room and not one on one if I confront her myself I will only cause her to dig herself in and lock the doors. If there's a neutral party present she won't have that chance yes I still think there's a chance that we can save this and it's still what I want but there has to be respect on both sides I'm not someone to pick a fight with the mother of my children. The woman I still love but she has to understand that if she walks. And it would be incredibly ironic if I learned so much about myself and her in the past few months only to use that knowledge in another relationship it's with her that I want to spend the rest of my life as my partner and the mother of my children not as someone who lives in another city and who will forever be a regret mistake update one so we've had our first couples therapy a few hours ago and it was an eye opener yes. She is depressed and has severe issues and no that does not excuse her behavior she told the two therapists and me bluntly that she lied to me when she had s time with me the past few weeks she told me repeatedly that she would never be intimate against her will. But during that session she told us that she felt obliged to do it because of her mistake hearing that she lied about something as primal as this. Even though I asked her and never efforts her, angered me tremendously yes. She feels shame but not guilt it's all focused on her own pain and sorrow and the fact that everyone who knows about this judges her the other parents at school. Her parents mine our friends the shame triggers her depression and in turn that triggers her anger she's just spouting her own rational for having an affair. A story that she has practiced for over a year in her own mind and usually in an angry state of mind and that's something that should and will stop during the session she was confronted several times by the therapists on why she was so angry on why her pain and regret focused on the literally small things that were wrong in our marriage. Instead of the things she did wrong in the same marriage I'll wait until the next session before confronting her with her anger and total lack of respect for me and our kids because I reckon that things like that can best be discussed with a therapist in the room and not one on one if I confront her myself I will only cause her to dig herself in and lock the doors. If there's a neutral party present she won't have that chance yes I still think there's a chance that we can save this and it's still what I want but there has to be respect on both sides I'm not someone to pick a fight with the mother of my children. The woman I still love but she has to understand that if she walks it's the end she does not get to decide if we remain friends. She does not get to decide if and how I heal myself if she walks out of this she loses me. I'll remain civil for the kids, take care of the finances. I'll remain civil for the kids. Take care of the finances and scrub her out of my life there will be no bond between us and I'll use every part of my energy to rebuild my life and be there for the kids she doesn't get to decide if she will be a factor in it. I'll remain civil for the kids, take care of the finances and scrub her out of my life there will be no bond between us and I'll use every part of my energy to rebuild my life and be there for the kids she doesn't get to decide if she will be a factor in it I do. I'll remain civil for the kids. Take care of the finances and scrub her out of my life there will be no bond between us and I'll use every part of my energy to rebuild my life and be there for the kids she doesn't get to decide if she will be a factor in it I do. Redditor's Reactions Redditor 1, Dude, what I'm about to say, is being said with utmost respect and care. Drop it. Drop this whole thing, because it's killing you. You might not recognize it, but this is slowly eroding away at you separate for a few months and keep contact with her to a minimum 10 minutes a day between you two at most but one hour a week minimum between her and your girls look dude i know this ain't easy but her recovery isn't on you it's on her all on her you tried your best but she didn't for now focus on those two beautiful girls of yours focus on them and on you be happy be together believe her when she says the spark is gone Emo she's likely telling the truth. When she tells you I want the spark back you tell her that's on you, not me. She cheated, it's on her to mend this wound, not you. Redditor 2, wow, this is really heartbreaking to read. Yeah I'm sorry you are going through this. I don't mean to be harsh but honestly, the fact that she's been ducking other men for the past year, and probably is still, is really the least of your problems right now. Where are your children during this separation? Is her family and friends aware of the issues she's dealing with? I personally tip this situation is way beyond anything we here are qualified to deal with. Your wife clearly needs professional help and right now you need to focus on your children's well-being and obviously your own. Your children deserve to have at least one parent that is healthy and in control. 
you need to seek out help from friends and family along with professional help for your own mental well-being. Redditor 3, you can't fix it. You tried, you tried really hard. Focus on the most important thing now, your kids. It's on her to fix herself, the marriage itself is most likely over.